Ibrahim. Today I'm going to talk about the, the ventilator adjustment. Adjustment of uh, flow. Usually the flow, this flow we adjust it and the volume controlled. But in the others, pressure controlled or pressure support, that we do not it. But the adjustment is uh, in the pressure control. For the flow itself uh, is responsible for important three things. Number one, to determine the uh, the inspiratory time. Number two, to determine the uh, pressure resistance. Uh, and number three, it's an important uh, point. When you look at this, this is the uh, ventilator-patient interactions. Increasing the flow is usually associated with increasing the respiratory rate. And decreasing the flow would be associated with decreasing the respiratory rate. You should take care of this. Increasing the flow reflects the patient with uh, uh, hyperventilate will become tachypnic. This is another important point. So this is uh, uh, number one. Number two, when you look at this, this is a curve for this is a pressure time curve for the volume control. Uh, this, this is the peak inspirator pressure, which is uh, the summation of the pressure resistance, which is, this is the difference between between peak and inspirator pressure and the plateau pressure. And this plateau pressure is what we call pressure elastance. This pressure resistance is important uh, because uh, it is uh, the result of uh, the flow multiplied by the resistance. So this pressure resistance, so increasing the flow will be associated with increasing this pressure resistance. Uh, and decreasing the flow will be associated with decreasing this pressure resistance. So the pressure resistance is dependent on the flow and the resistance. And the, uh, the flow itself, increasing the flow will be associated with increasing this part, this part only over the blue 2 pressure because the blue 2 pressure is uh, the result of two things uh, the change in the tidal volume and uh, compliance increasing the tidal volume will be associated with increase in this uh, blood 2 pressure decreasing the tidal volume will be associated with decrease in this tidal, uh, this blood 2 pressure the same thing when you look at the compliance, uh, decreasing the compliance becomes bad. This means that the blood to pressure will increase. Increasing the compliance, which is good, this means that there is a decrease in the blood to pressure. This is not our topic, but our topic here is this, uh, the uh, flow itself. So the flow will determine this part, this part which is the pressure resistance. Uh, that's why when you when we call, when you look at this is increasing the flow, will not be associated with N, with the, with barotrauma or volutrauma. What is uh, uh, meant for volutrauma or important for volutrauma is the change in the tidal volume which will lead to overinflation of the alveoli and accordingly the blood pressure will exceed 35 centimeter water and this will lead to rupture. So this is a very important part. So the flow itself, we, when we set the flow, this is the flow is important for determinations of this uh, pressure uh, uh, resistance which is in any spiratory one, not the expiratory. So at, uh, uh, at the same time, it determines the uh, uh, the delivery of the preset uh, uh, tidal volume. Increasing the flow itself will be associated with the decrease in the tidal in the, in the time for the delivery of the tidal volume, and decrease in the flow will be associated with increasing in spatial time, which is the time for the delivery of the preset tidal volume. The peak in spatial pressure, so the increase in the pressure will be associated with in the increase in the flow will be associated with increase in the pressure resistance, and the decrease in the flow will be associated with decrease in the pressure resistance according to the peak and spatial pressure. And we have mentioned before that uh, the increase in the respiratory and decrease in respiratory rate is due to increase in the flow or the flow itself will be associated with reflex the cabinia uh, 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 from the patient this is the uh, volume controlled ventilation so volume controlled we set the tidal volume and set the flow we are talking about the flow the impact of flow on these curves number one the flow itself, this is a 30 liter per minute, which means a half a liter per second. So this is a tidal volume, which is half a liter. I mean, this means that, that this tidal volume will be delivered by this flow in one second. So this is a, a very important point. Look at this. This is a 30 liter per minute. This means a half a liter per second. So this half liter will be delivered again in one second. So this is the flow determines the, the time for delivery of this tidal volume. Again, this is a, another important point which you look at this. This is a curve. This is a beacon spatty pressure. And this is a pressure resistance. And this is a pressure resistance. Pressure resistance uh, equals uh, the flow multiplied by the resistance. The resistance of this case is 6 uh, 
uh, centimeter water per liter per second, and this is a flow. Flow 30 liter per second per, per, per minute, which means that about half liter per second. So the pressure I mean, equals here half multiplied by six. So the pressure here result. This is the pressure resistance will be three. So this is the three centimeter water. This is the pressure resistance. So this 30 uh, liter per minute resulted in in the production in this patient with uh, resistance six in three centimeter water. Look uh, what will happen if we change this. This is uh, if we increase it uh, from uh, from 30 to 60, we double it. Look at this. This is the 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 flow is now 60. 60 liter per minute. Uh, this means that. Uh, it is uh, one liter per second. So this half uh, half liter will be delivered in half a second. So in the previous state, uh, this half liter, this 500 ml, were delivered in one second. But this, when we increase the flow, the time for delivery of this tidal volume decreased. Now decreased to, to the half liter, uh, to half seconds. So this is an important point. So this is the flow will determine the time for the delivery of the tidal volume. Again, when we look at the pressure resistance, the pressure resistance, this is increased also because the pressure resistance equals the flow multiplied the resistance. No change in the resistance here. The resistance here, the flow is 6 liter per minute, which means 1 liter per second multiplied by 6. So the pressure resistance is now 6. And instead of being 3, it is 6. So this, but there is no change here in the plateau pressure. The plateau pressure is the result of an important part, which is the tidal volume and the compliance. This is the compliance of the patient. So this is the pressure equal tidal volume over compliance. Tidal volume 500 ml over 100 equals 5. So the pressure resulting from the inflation of the lung of the alveoli for this, uh, by this uh, tidal volume with this compliance will be 5 cm water added to the 5 cm water of beam. So this is, uh, means that it is 10. So the blood two pressure here is, uh, 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 is 10. No change in the blood two pressure. So the blood two pressure is affected only by this tidal volume and by the compliance. This is uh, for regarding the flow. This is a preset flow, but what about uh, the flow when you look at uh, the flow this is a normal flow for the patients. But when you look at the this uh, flow, will it change? If the patient is, uh, say, COBD patient, so COBD patients, uh, the flow will decrease. You look at this. This is a decrease in the flow because the plateau pressure is the same. But this increase in the resistance, that's why the pressure resulting will be there's a decrease in the flow. Look at this also when you look at the bronchial asthma. So the bronchial asthma also, there is uh, the plateau pressure. There is no change in the plateau pressure, but uh, the, uh, the resistance increase, so the, 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 there is a decrease in the flow. It's just the peak flow, you look at this, there is a decrease in the peak flow, which is not the same like that. Uh, look at the ARDS. So ARDS, uh, the, the resistance is normal, but the elastic coil, the collapsibility of the alveoli is large, so there is increase in the flow. Peak flow is increased. Take care of this because this is very important when you look at uh, the COPD patients uh, or the bronchial asthma. You have to calculate uh, the uh, the flow, and you have you know the uh, uh, the plateau pressure, and this is the expiratory flow. So you can uh, 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 calculate uh, the expiratory resistance. In this case, the expiratory resistance increased, and accordingly. The compliance multiply the oxybiotic resistance, you can calculate the oxybiotic time constant and determine what is the maximum respiratory rate for this patient. So from the flow, this is the reset flow, we have talked about it, and this is the passive flow, which is the expiratory flow, which you can determine, or which you can look at it uh, and determine uh, the how much the flow, the expiratory flow, uh, uh, according to the state of the patient with the normal COPD or ARDS or bronchial asthma, and in this case, you can calculate uh, the expiratory time constant and accordingly the maximum expected respiratory rate for this patient. Thank you.